seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Yeah. What's up guys, welcome to today's vlog. Today we're gonna to be going over one specific technique and that is a dry and wet cutting technique called stroking. So I'm gonna show you guys how to do it with your scissor and I'm also gonna take you over to the mannequin and I'm gonna show you guys how to cut hair using the technique as well. The thing I wanna talk about first is the scissor. So we're gonna be cutting dry hair today and I'm not gonna be using a dry cutting scissor. So I wanna share with you guys why I chose not to cut with a dry cutting scissor. And the reason for that is most dry cutting scissors will push the hair a little bit. They're meant to glide through the hair so that you don't get all that tugging and pulling. It's just a better experience for dry cutting, which is great most of the time when you're using it for slide cutting techniques, point cutting, all of those different things, it feels really good. Now, when you're doing a technique like stroking, you wanna make sure that you're gripping the hair as you're cutting. So I'm gonna to choose today to go with the Mizutani Type K. This is a medium range scissor, so it's in the medium price point, uh, about $600. So if you guys are looking for a new scissor, check out freesaloneducation.com uh, and you can see this scissor on there. So I'll link it below so you guys can check it out as well. I wanna start off by saying that you can use any scissor to do this technique. I've used many scissors throughout my career. I started in beauty school with really cheap scissors and I worked my way up and now you guys know I use Mizutani scissors. Mizutani scissors, in my opinion, are the best scissors there are in the industry. So um, you can do it with all different levels of scissors. Now, there are things in your scissor that make it easier to do the technique. Things that I really like are to make sure that this thumb ring right here has a little groove in it. What that does allows a couple different things. So it allows me to cut with my thumb halfway in the hole, just like that. That makes it easier to cut on top of your fingers. And also when we're doing this stroking technique, it allows me not to have my thumb all the way in the hole of the scissor. So it allows me to move the scissor back and forth a lot easier. So let's show you guys how to do the technique so that you guys know what I'm talking about. So what you're gonna do to do this technique is put your ring finger in just like you normally would. Then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put my thumb halfway in the blade just like this. Now, if you don't have that groove, what you're gonna wanna do is just twist your wrist up a little bit so that your thumb is in the hole enough to open and close the blade without slipping. So that's the only thing that's gonna make it a little bit different. So you go from being like this with your wrist to you could be like this with your wrist. Now, the key thing with this technique, one thing that I've always thought of is you remember how you used to make a pencil look like it's rubber as you move it back and forth. So that's how you want the blade to move as you're cutting on top of your finger. You want it to shake up and down um, as you're cutting. That's gonna allow the blade to open and close, give you a smoother movement with the blade. You don't wanna see your hand going uh, a mile a minute like this. You can, but it's just easier to move the blade, have your hand move just a little bit, and have the blade move up and down like this. So. The other thing that you're gonna do when you're working with this technique is you're gonna be going over top of your fingers. You're gonna have the section in your hand. You're gonna go over top of your fingers. You're gonna open as you come up and then close as you come down. So you're cutting, open, close, open, close, open, close, just like that. Work your way down the section and cut. Now, what I like to do when I was first learning this technique was sit at uh, in front of the TV, if you guys are watching a TV show, whatever you're doing, and just work on this motion, just like this, opening and closing the scissor and getting faster and faster at it, so that no matter what, as you're working the blade back and forth, it's just an automatic movement that happens. So it makes the technique, when you put hair in your hand, a lot easier to do. So we're gonna get over to the mannequin. I wanna show you guys cutting hair in that way, show you the effects that it creates. Hope you guys like this video. Let's get started with our step-by-step. -step. Here we go. All right guys, so a few tools make this technique a lot easier. This is the Bricado Vibrastrate Iron. So what I'm gonna do is just go through polish the haircut. So let's assume that I've done a bob haircut already. That's how this mannequin sits currently. So we're just uh, assuming we've cut our structured cut 
Now I'm gonna go through and create more texture and movement with the stroking technique. So I polish the hair using the vibrostrate iron, which allows the hair to fall uh, more uniform. So when I'm cutting it dry, I can see the weight and how it's shifting throughout the haircut. So I just go through, polish mid shaft to ends, the blow dry, we focus on the base. And now you can see this shape, the overall shape of the haircut as it sits currently. Now, what I wanna do is just tighten that shape up a little bit, bring up the elevation so that the, um, the graduation doesn't start so low and the density doesn't start so low. So what I'm gonna do first is section off right underneath that crown area. So where the hair would kind of blanket over, I go and I create a nice triangle section, the highest point at the, the kind of low crown area and then going right behind the ear. I'm gonna pull everything straight out from me, creating more of a square look to the back of the head shape. And here's a little trick that I like to do. I like to put a little oil on the hair so I get slip with my fingers. So I don't wanna have a ton of tension or stickiness in my hand. So I use the Joico, this is the K-Pak Color Therapy Restorative Styling Oil. Um, so this is really just a leave-in treatment, but it gives a nice slip to the hair. It's also putting a treatment on the hair at the same time. So it's kind of a win-win for the guest. It's good, and also for doing this technique, you don't want your fingers to stick to the hair. So it allows that slide. So. Starting off the technique, we talked about the open and close of the scissor. So as I come up, I'm opening, and as I come down on the hair, I'm closing, using just the tip of the scissor. A lot of people, when they do this technique for the first time, they wanna go in with the middle part of the blade, which is usually where a lot of people like to cut, but you really just wanna focus on using the tip. That's what's gonna give you that structure. It's what's gonna help you cut lines with this technique. So just really focus on my finger angle. Everything's pointing up. My elevation is up and my uh, over direction is straight out. So there, well, there really is no over direction. Everything's coming straight out from the head to create a nice foundation in the back of the head shape so that we're not pushing too much weight forward. Also look at the size of my section. The thicker the section is, the harder this technique is. So when you first start off doing it, make sure you take nice tiny sections, maybe an, a half an inch at a time and work your way through. So you can already see how I've collapsed that shape on the interior of this cut. Now we've got our exterior that we're gonna go through and cut as well. Before I do that, I'm gonna go through and detail the outer perimeter. Um, this you could do at the very end if you want to. I like to really see that shape unfolding, so I'm gonna go through and just polish out that line again using the tip of the scissor. So the type K is great because it's got a nice strong blade. It allows me to start to see that shape. Now you can see how long that top is. I'm gonna go through and do a little bit of the stroking technique on the top as well, just to lighten it up. So again, no over direction. Everything's coming straight out from the head, opening as I come up, closing as I come down. What I tell everybody when I'm teaching this technique hands-on is it's slow and steady. Um, there's no reason to rush through this technique, so make sure you go nice and slow, get the technique down, and as you get better at it, you will get faster. It's a pretty good visual, I think, from the top. You're really seeing when I'm opening and when I'm closing it. I also didn't speed this video up. Uh, so that you guys would hopefully be able to see how that technique is working through. The great part about cutting hair dry as opposed to cutting it wet, when you're cutting hair wet, it sticks together. So you get harder lines, which in turn can create some density throughout the haircut and give you weight lines in places that you didn't want. When you go in and cut it dry, all the hair is separated. It's all its own uh, piece of fabric. So as I go through and I cut it, I'm getting a, more of a diffuse line, which doesn't build up as much density. So I don't get those weight lines throughout the cut. Now we're gonna work in the front fringe area. I'm leaving a slight asymmetrical feel to the front, so the right-hand side of the mannequin is gonna be longer than it is on the left-hand side. I'll show you why in a little bit. But we're going through, I'm just over-directing that entire top section over to me on the opposite side, opposite side from where the, the person's gonna wear it. So I go through, I do the stroking technique down, creating that line, creating that separation, the texture, and then when I push it back over, you can see the angle that it creates. 
This is great for people that um, get too heavy of a bang or too heavy of a face frame. It just really breaks it up. So now I'm going to throw in the Joyco. This is the Ironclad Thermal Protectant Spray. It's really light hold, but it's great for thermal protection and also allowing me to kind of create my style with the iron without it being too crunchy. And then I can go in with a finishing spray once I get the, the uh, style set. But this product is great for uh, really the workability of the style. So what I'm doing is with the Vibra Straight Iron, I'm bringing everything just like I cut it over to the opposite side, giving it a nice bend with the iron. You can curl with this iron, you can straighten with it. And then what I'm gonna do is kick it back over to the opposite side, which will give it a nice little flip and um, movement onto the opposite side. So when people want the, that side swept bang, this is a great technique for doing that, creating that look, even if you're not working with a bob, if you're working with longer hair, whatever it is, iron everything to the opposite side, give it a little curl, then when you kick it back, you get that flip. Now this is the Joyco Power Spray. This is a really strong hold hairspray, dries really quickly. I spray it on the hair, it really sets that hold. You can see the kick of the fringe and then also the kick in that disconnection. I'm gonna show you guys another style because I know people are gonna comment and say, no one would wear their bangs in their face. There are people that would, but if you're a person that would not, I'm gonna show you a style for that as well. So here's the texture, the movement you can see in the back of the haircut. You can see how great that shape looks. It really kind of uh, has a nice buildup of weight, but it's not too much. And now what I'm gonna do is just go through with my blow dryer and blow dry the fringe up and over. This is where that asymmetrical feel comes in that makes it really uh, work out great. It helps hold the hair back because it's a little bit longer on the right side. But when you comb it back off of the face, you actually get a symmetrical feel to the haircut. So not only does it allow it to help it stay on the opposite side because it's a little bit longer, but you get the symmetrical feel as well. So hope you guys like this look. Definitely let me know if you have questions on the technique, but pretty cool finish to the haircut. Hope you guys like it. Make sure you tag me and let me know what you think below. All right, guys, and again, remember, uh, when you're doing this technique by yourself in your house while you're watching TV, just practice moving this blade back and forth, opening and closing. This is not something that will be easy right away for most of you, but as you work on it, you'll get better and better, faster and faster. It's a really cool technique. Uh, your customers will like it, it's something different. The effect that it creates is definitely different, so it's a great tool to have. Um, in your toolbox as you're moving forward and creating different techniques on your guests. So hope you guys like it. If you liked it, do me a favor, share it with your friends, share it on Facebook, share it wherever you want. I'd love for um, you guys to help me spread the word of free salon education. But thank you guys so much for watching. And again, remember if you want 20% off uh, the different tools that we have on freesaloneducation.com for purchase, use the code MattBeckVlog at checkout. That's MattBeckVlog and you'll get 20% off your purchase on most items. So hope you guys enjoyed the video. Let me know in the comments below if you have questions, subscribe, and I'll see you on the next one. Thanks.